Welcome back to The Music. In this episode, we'll be at Alex's Bar interviewing Dinah Cancer from 45 Grey, along with her music video from the cult classic Peter Ivers' New Wave Theater. We'll hang out with Dave and Jen at Release the Bats. We'll interview the band Honda Garage and have a live performance by Tragic Black, 45 Grave, and A Spirit Before a Fall, all here on Back to the Music. Welcome back to the music. Dinah Cancer is a legend in the goth punk scene, and she's been rocking the stage since 1979. We caught up with her at Alex's Bar for this exclusive interview. I'm here with the amazing Dinah from 45 Grave. Hello, all you people out there. I have to say I'm very stoked. Because, okay, you started back in like 78, 79, right? 79. Okay. And the thing that's cool is like, okay, we had the punk rock scene going on, but you sort of geared it over to more of the goth, dark, horror yeah, death, side. death rock. Wherever right. you want, which call is it. really the cool. dark side is better. Right, and what what motivated you to sort of bring that out? Is this part of your personality? Actually, You're actually, it, <laughs> it it just happened because that's the way I am, and I've always been a creature of darkness and everything. And um, actually, you know, when we were going through the original lineup, you know, we were just doing it to survive. Now it's been like. 34 years mm -hmm. and it's you know still going and we're performing and so amazing and you have no idea so many people love you and that's so great because you think 30 years that you've been doing this and you're still here still rocking it so that's really cool and the thing is is we are trying to do we're trying to bring that whole music scene back where people actually go to the venues actually appreciate the music Mm -hmm. buy the CDs or whatever they got, but instead of sitting behind their computer and looking at YouTube videos, people are actually going out and seeing the bands, because back in the day, that's what was going on, and the cool thing about you mm -hmm. is you were actually a performer, or like you're still a performer, or you actually have a cool sort of, you know, vibe going on, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's just different. You're not out there in your jeans and a t-shirt. You know, you've got a thing going no, on. No, my parents thought that this was just going to be a, you know, a temporary thing and stuff, and no, it's not. It's, it's it's, it's just cute. who I am. And that's all I think is great. I'm so happy about that. Now, we were noticing a cool thing about you is back in the day, mm -hmm. one of my favorite movies, Blade Runner. Okay. Yeah. You were we an were extra in Blade Runner, and I didn't even know that. Just there was a group of people that were in Blade Runner because okay. the punks from back in the day, we would do extra work. So a lot of like people that like started out in their bands have moved on to better things, but we all started out doing extra work that's really cool and yeah. then another thing was return of the living dead yeah. right didn't you guys have a soundtrack or what was it uh about? yeah it was um the song party time was put into the movie and they loved it and it's kind of like one of the theme songs for you know return of the living dead which is really cool because i know tsol and i think the cramps had it too and the damned right. and just a lot of great bands Heck on that yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. So, okay, so what's going on? What, what do you think about the music scene now compared to, like, what it was back in the day? Well, coming from a generation to where we found out about bands is by collecting flyers and, you know, going to shows and handing out flyers. It's like, it's amazing today with the technology that's available. And the one thing is the reason why we're so homegrown to our old bands is because that's how we heard and it was something special for the band to hand you a flyer and go come see us perform right. it, was, it was a collection was like a you would collect flyers exactly. from the show they were all over people's walls they would wallpaper their walls with it it was just it was yeah. really great right now with the music scene and stuff even if you're like like a band of my caliber being legendary you know, it's just a very hard market out of there, and that's why we go a little bit extra so we can go and meet people and just let them know that we're still around. I'm still playing out music, and um, yeah, you can do it. You just have to really kick your ass. Yeah, but if to, it's in your heart, you're going to do it, right? Yeah. Never too old to rock and roll. Here's Dinah Cancer performing on the cult classic Peter Ivers' New Wave Theater. Thank you. 
Gen Bouts have been hosting and released the Bouts for over 15 years at Case Raw in Long Beach, California. We had a great time interviewing them in the mix of chaos that created the fun because, of course, that's what happens at Release the Bouts. I'm here with Jen Bouts and Dave Bouts. Hello. And we're here at Case Raw in Long Beach and they are doing their Release the Bouts goth night to alien sex fiends. So, when did you guys start this whole deal? Dude, you're talking about Release the Bats, the whole club? Yeah. 1998, man. 1998. Okay. This started. So we all weren't even born yet. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Some, of the, some of the viewers we're were about little. seven. Okay, so what started the whole deal? In 1998, a uh, couple of months before October, Benz and Luan, the people that run this club at, at Quesera, they said, hey, you guys are all into that goth and death rock stuff. Do you guys want to throw a Halloween party for us? Apparently they had an annual, an annual Halloween party that we've been drinking. <laughs> it's really so bad. So wow, that's, that's hard to believe. Apparently they have an annual Halloween drinking. party at the Quesera, <laughs> and at that point <laughs> they, said, they said, hey, would you throw a Halloween party for us? And we said, are you kidding? Of course we will. So we thought at the moment, you know what, the term death rock really kind of subsided at that point. It just kind of went away. So we brought it back. And our, our, our term at the time was, before there was gothic, there was death rock. Yes, I remember that. And, and that, that really spawned something. And it happened that we, we knew a lot of the right bands. We had really great friends. Dinah Cancer from 45 Yes, who we just interviewed last week. A lot of good friends. Yes, Jaton Damone and all of our friends that we had at the time. We're looking for a place to play. <laughs> and we, we, we brought a place. Hey, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Hold her back! <laughs> so we brought a place, a place for bands. Community X. Yeah. Community yeah. Stop X. Stop being shy. Community. There Community we go. X. See? There Tony we go. It, you know, it's released the bats. This is what X happens at release the bats. Tony X? It's chaos. This is what happens. Oh, that's there's, right. There's no rhyme or reason for any of it. This is what happens. Tony X? Tony X. Give you a pen to give to Corinne. Wait. Okay, okay, no, so we need to talk about your Our pen. viewers okay. are going, what the okay, fuck's let's talk going about on? Next month. We're chaos. Next month We're pure chaos. Next month. Okay. We don't have any rules. So, rules are for fools. We have big news. Every okay. every big release news. of bats is, is, is big news. I want to support but you. next month, March 27th, we have a band called Haunted Garage. Oh, I'll tell you a story about Haunted Garage. Okay. Yeah, but. It's 1988. 1988. Haunted Garage played with 45 Grave at Fender's Ballroom in Long Beach, California. It was one of the first shows I went to. 1988. Remember, you were there when the, when the fucking suicidals raided the place and fucking had metal chairs? Fucking death rock faggots. Remember that stuff? That was real. That was real. Haunted Garage played with 45 Grave, a band called L7. L7, check it out. Chick band. The band L7. Remember L7? But they were a chick band. My first job. This is what happens at Release of Bats. My yeah, first job, yeah. I was a busboy at a Mexican restaurant. A yeah, white, a wet old busboy at a Mexican hey! restaurant. Figure that out. Well, Don't the, the owner, <laughs> the owner's daughter, the owner's the daughter, owner's daughter oh, was a lesbian, and she was dating that. one of the chicks in L7. So I'm at this show with, with Hana Garage and 45 Grave, 45 Grave and L7, and I, I run into the, the owner's daughter. She's going out with a guitarist from L7. Whoa, little world. Anyway, so last fast, fast forward. 2015, March 27th. Haunted Garage is playing at Release the Bats on March 27th. Haunted fucking Garage is playing Release the Bats on March 27th. Whoa. I was on the Monta Williams show. Mon no, you no, uh, That's right, that's right. Yeah. I was pregnant with my daughter, so it had to be 23 yes. years ago. Oh 
What and Haunted Garage. Yeah. I was a I Dookie was a, Fly Swatter was, was on the a, panel. Tell Williams had Haunted Garage. It was Lent After oh, Midnight, yeah. Haunted Garage, Dookie Fly Swatter, and Haunted Garage. Yeah. She and and prepared. some vampire guy, and then awesome. some Christian. I have it on video. And, and a Christian. Christian. And a Christian. It was about Ooh, vampire. Christian, the token it. Christian. And token Christian. Up, <laughs> and, and on Monta Williams, they showed um obituary. That's right. Oh, club. Obituary was a spawn off club from Helter Skelter no. oh. at the time. Yeah. Okay, so Helter We're Skelter. So, we are so ADD. When I was we are 18, ADD. no, actually, when I was 16, I had a fake ID that said I was 19. Exactly. Didn't we all? And I went to Helter Skelter. I I was so now. I was 13 and I had an 18 year old ID, which let me in to wait, a fucking club. Totally. No, I didn't get to fuck off. No, I didn't <laughs> Because you're on like, crystal meth, right? Well, <laughs> no, because I was drinking Bartles yeah. and James and the That's uh, actually true. Anyway, that was that was 20, 25 now years back ago. To our sponsor. 25 years ago, boss. True, true, true. Remember that. Right. Boone's okay. Farm. Very true. Boone's Very Farm. True. Boone's Farm. So now we DJ Helter Skelter, me and Shane. Shane Talada, DJ Dingbat, uh, singer of Element. He's DJing right now. He's this DJing right now. Shane Dingbat and Is Dave Bat. Like an hour? <laughs> Both DJ at Helter Skelter. Brad Hartman. He's the drummer from Peeling Gray. Peeling Gray is the band I play in now. Which one? Peeling Gray. Peeling Gray. Peeling Gray. Look us up. Peeling Gray. G R E Y. Peeling Gray. Not G R A Y. We're a really great band. New album coming out in July. We're having a record release Wait, does party. Does that have to do with Helter Skelter? We totally freaking ADD. Totally, totally we are so ADD right now. So nothing would ha happen now without Helter Skelter. This is what happens at Release the Bat. Mike Stewart, <laughs> Mike Stewart, right. a friend of ours, and Bruce Purdue, who have done Helter Skelter, Skelter for years and years, <laughs> they brought it back after a, a lull of time. A time went by where there, there was no Helter Skelter. They brought it back. That was the first club we ever went to. Oh, by the way, one of the first. It wasn't for Helter Skelter. Okay, now how did you guys? Get connected with Helter Skelter then. We've been going there since 1989. Okay, and then what happened? What was the connection that made you go from just going there to actually DJing there? Mike brought it back. Okay. Mike and Bruce brought Helter Skelter back after about a five or ten year hiatus, and they said, "Hey, Shane, Dave, would you guys be interested in DJing this night? We have uh, three rooms. We want you guys for the patio." Uh, oh, great, great! It's at the Dragonfly in Hollywood. And we thought it'd be gr it's a great oh, idea. So they, they brought us into the mix okay. on top of what they've been all those years. And how could we pass it up? Release the Bats and Helter Skelter, yeah. a conglomerate together. Are you fucking kidding? Yes. So we couldn't pass it up. And we've been doing it for, what, four years now? So where is that located? At the Dragonfly in yeah. Hollywood on yeah. Santa Monica Boulevard, Cross yeah. Street, Wilcox. And how, okay. often, and yeah. how, how often is does this club... Happen. Helter Skelter happens on like the third Saturday of the month. No, second. Second Saturday of the month. I don't know. Second. Just, just second. fucking well, Google we need it. To know the truth. Just so that people can we all want the truth. Second. I know the truth. I know the truth. The truth is. The truth shall. The, the second Saturday. The truth shall second set Saturday you month. free. Killer pins. I killer pins. Know. I have killer pins, we man. Did pictures of it, killer pins. You did. Killer yes. Awesome. Okay. So I have pins that I make that are just already rad. And then I have pins that you could have me make for you that will be rad. A total Val. A total Val. Okay, well, how do you do that? Was that really Val, girl? Okay, well, how do we find these pins? Um, it, you know, Facebook. Cause On what? Okay, Facebook what? Just, um, Google. just look at killer, killer pins, pins and you'll find me. I don't know. It's some slashes and some Facebooks. And no, is it called killer pins? Yeah. Killer pins. I don't so know if I if, if I if I Google okay, we're yeah. all re, we're all retarded, or okay? So Facebook on the search, do we look for killer pins? Sure, not? yes. Okay. Or you could look me up, Jen Bats. There you go. And you'll find killer pins eventually. Because they are killer pins. They're the kind that we used to use in the eighties. We used to for use any of your vents or bands or just for Well your we pens. used to stick them all over our jackets. Just in case a bomb doesn't go off or anything and you guys like we all have a future, what do you think is gonna be really cool for this place and what is your plans for the release the bats? There's so many on? great things happening. There's so yeah. many new bands coming out and so many old bands to rediscover. But, so you guys are the third wait, the third wait, Friday wait. of every month, right? Fourth. Friday. Fourth, fourth, fourth Friday of every Friday month, fourth, of every month. Fourth, for the past 16 years. And if there's not a band here, he's going to be DJing. 
This guy, this guy right here. And the coolest gosh stuff that you have ever heard. And her pins. Is it time to drink yet? Old yeah. stuff, new stuff, old stuff, new stuff. Let's drink, let's do it. We interviewed Haunted Garage at Release the Bats. Unlike most bands, they bring a creepy, cool energy, which is like watching a horror flick on stage. Well, we're here with Honda Garage. Yay! Me, Thank you. I'm Dookie me, Flyswatter. Tell them your name. I'm Dookie Flyswatter, the lead singer for Haunted Garage. Okay, and cool I've been in some movies too, like Surf Nazis Must Die, I wrote Blood Diner, and a few others. Right on. This, this is our drummer, uh, Brian Bieber. And this is uh, uh, Satan. Uh, Satan. 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 Satanico Bandejo. We, we got Satan over here. And then here. we got. Eric Erath over Hello. back there. He's our other guitar player. And then we have Death Row Tull here on the bass. Get it? Uh, Patty Rowan. And uh, How we. How many of you guys been playing? Like, you know, this is like this is like the second version of Hot and Garage. We started like in 1985 <laughs> and went to about 93 and broke up and then had a couple of reunion revivals and then decided to revive it uh, uh, with the. Uh, these guys a year ago. Okay, that's right. You guys are really good. Oh my Thank gosh. Okay, well check it out. We we checked on like we rehearse all the time and like have a lot of fun and do a lot of really movies good. and stuff. Yeah. And it was fun too because you guys have the whole costume thing. Going oh on. yeah, but they were but like as soon really as we like came this? in, you guys it was really like, look like this in real life. I know. Yeah. What the yeah. I forgot. I forgot. We're gonna go back in history. Okay. Montel Williams. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bef on, before he was I, in New York, Montel Williams' first season was in Los Angeles. Yep. And you were there. With, I was in the audience. Yeah, with Sean Bryan from... Uh, Sean Brennan. Sean yeah, Brennan, that right. Guy. From, London uh, After Midnight. London After Midnight, right. Um. Also, there was a Christian guy on there that was, like, really mad about you. Oh, and, and he said, like, uh, oh, we like... It's not that we don't like rock. We, we like Sammy, H Sammy Hagar. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yay. I can't We're drive 55. Laughing. I can't that drive 55. Cool. Yeah. He that goes, oh, that's cool. a good role model. Yeah. That was so good. The show was supposed to be about goths, not about vampires. Yeah, but it, uh, somebody I was I was all, working there showed him one of our tapes at the last minute, and a Duchess de Sade tape. On YouTube. The yeah. whole first part of that Montel and thing. and and they, they go oh we got to get these guys we'll just change it to Goss Shock Rock yeah Shock Rock right yeah, so it was not at all I was on name that tune no. what yeah how'd you do I did I got I knocked out channel. by a tiebreaker motivated you guys to do this cool sort of costume thing that not too many you people know, do I was just like this was like before Guar and a lot of, like really, really inspired by people like Screamin' Jay Hawkins and uh, Alice Cooper, the, the oh, and, uh, right. New York Dolls, and one of the, the few theatrical bands that were going on right. at the time. And believe it or not, about James Brown too, because he was a hell of a performer. Okay. And, uh, and, and it's just that like, it screamed that nobody was doing a movie about B horror movies. And B movies in the 80s, uh, the slasher movies and, and stuff like that were just booing all over the place. Well, we actually interviewed Dinah Cancer from 45 Grave, and she was in Return of the Living Dead. Some I, of her she music. Was, yeah. So you're familiar with that, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> it's like gospel. Yeah, exactly. Gospel. And I was watching another movie where they used her uh, Party Time, the original yes. version of Party Time, yes. where people were running away from and a slasher. As well, I yeah, think. but it was well like not back. Return of the Living Dead, it was a different one. She's a good friend. So, you guys are continuing on. Where are you guys playing next? Where Next in Los Angeles, it'll be May 8th at Cafe Nila with a whole slew of theatrical bands. And if people want to find you... Do oh, you go to Facebook. Uh, slash? Uh, Haunted slash Haunted Garage. Okay. Uh, or uh, me, Dookie Flyswatter. And we're going to have uh, uh, T-shirts uh, available online and stickers and stuff like that real soon. And we're, we're just co concentrating now in the next two weeks on getting um, the beginnings of a new EP together. Oh, that'll be fun. So that's what we're doing. Well, that's great. Not but bad for old guys. <laughs> yeah, we're working on a six-song EP. <laughs> and it's probably going to be produced by uh, Kill Allen Wrench. And uh, it, it, yeah, we played two Five Dead Stage Divers and Flesh Easy Rider and Fleshless. So we played three of the songs tonight.
Oh, and Evil Dead. And so Evil that's Dead. four of them, yeah. Doing three new songs and three old songs that were never recorded. That's right. Back from the day. So it's kind of like a split EP with ourselves. Well, that's really cool, and we're glad. We're really glad we came out to see you guys. Oh, you know I'm really what? glad. We had really a blast. Like, seriously, you have to come see them live because it's a whole different, awesome. whole different thing than if you look on YouTube or something. It's like not even the same. So. But what the hell? We just figured it. We'd we'd rock it hard. We, and, and that's when my back went out. It's because I was rocking it kind of hard. That's great. I think it's so great. It's fun. It was fun. It's so cool. Well, hey. I think we're going to wrap it up because you guys right. are really, I am wrap stoked that we got to talk to you and I'm stoked that we got to see you play. And we're here at Case Raw, Release the Bats with Haunted the Garage. And you're on communityx.net. <laughs> Now let's see if you can name this band. Peasants gather round a beautiful mute. Hello, good evening, glad you could come. The time is dead, no longer here. Would you like to recite your leather man or man? Do you feel?
This next video is Tragic Black, live at Release the Bats. up this episode of Back to the Music. Next time, we'll be live at Gallery 7 featuring Brass Knuckle Voodoo, Ricky Berger, Jeremy Cross, Space Cream, and more only on Back to the Music. Keep it on X.
Thank you.